Hi, I'm George, and we'll be taking this faded photograph and doing this to it, bringing back a lot of contrast and colors. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. Hit that bell notification icon for notifications of my new videos. Now, we'll start off with this image right here, and then we'll add in a few layers to give us complete control over how this image looks. And the main tricky one in here is going to be a black and white layer right there. All right, let's go ahead and see how this goes. I'll just get rid of that. Now, the first thing we need is to have a couple of new layers. So right click where it says background and choose duplicate layer. Choose OK. Right click on that one and duplicate layer and choose OK again. So we now have three layers. Hide the top one. This is just going to be our comparison layer. Come down to this layer here that says background copy. And we're going to convert this layer into a black and white layer. Go up to enhance. Come down to convert to black and white and in here pick newspaper it has the highest contrast of any of these things and then pull the contrast up a fair amount if i pull this over here you can kind of watch it over here on the left hand side if you go too far it gets too blocky and contrasty you don't want to go that far pull it up maybe about two-thirds and that's pretty good it just adds in a bit of contrast kind of blocks things up just a little bit we'll use that you can see we have more contrast here now than we had over there and then choose okay so this will be used for the contrast in the picture, but we also need to add in more color. Again, let's go ahead and hide this one. And notice that there's a lot of color missing, a lot of color saturation. We can work on that with another layer. Right click on background, choose duplicate layer, and OK. Now for this one, we're going to be blending this layer into this bottom layer. You do that up here with the blend modes and come down to multiply right there. And that just multiplies the colors together. And that's too much, it's too dark. So go up here to opacity and change this to 50%. Just kind of tones it down just a bit, but that brings back a lot of our colors. Let's now come into the black and white layer and we'll blend this black and white layer into these layers underneath and that will bring back in our contrast. Go up to the blend modes again and this time come down to soft light. And if I show and hide this, you can see there is that effect. It's bringing in a lot of that nice contrast for us. And we can go further on this by controlling the contrast on this black and white layer with an adjustment layer. Go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer right there and levels where it says use previous layer to create clipping mask. Check that, choose OK. And in here, we can now adjust the contrast of the black and white and that will adjust the contrast of everything else. Gives us total control over the picture. If I pull the black in, Notice how our blacks get richer in the image. The light and midtones stay pretty much the same, but the black gets richened up. Now, the number that I used, you can type it in right down here, was 83. You can adjust the midtones right there. So you have midtone control, nice and clean. And again, we're only adjusting the black and white layer. Now, on the midtones, I left this one alone at just one. And then on the white, you can control the whites right there kind of the lightness. Notice as I move the whites, the midtones move, so the midtones are always directly between the white and the black end, so it's always in the midpoint. On the whites, the number that I used down here was 204, and choose OK. So we've added back in a lot of contrast, and if I hide that and show it again, you can see there we go, there's that nice contrast control. Now, the colors are a little bit off still, and they're a little bit soft. We can fix that by adding in an adjustment layer on top of everything in here. So go up here to layer, come down to new adjustment layer, and this time hue saturation. In this case, don't check that. I'm doing the coloration for the whole thing, not just the black and white layer. I want the whole thing colorized, so there it is. Now on the hue saturation, you can work this by channel. And if we look at our picture, the greens are kind of lost in here, and the sky is kind of dull. Those are the two spots I want to work on. Now, if we come down to the greens here and I move the saturation back and forth, notice we don't really see anything. So the greens aren't controlling. The green channel is not controlling those bushes. Let me set this one back to zero. The next option is going to be yellows or blues. Let's try the yellows. And I'll move the saturation back and forth. And there we go. So the yellows is controlling the foliage in this particular picture. And we want to adjust this. We want to make this more blue. We want to push that towards the blue which is right here. They're just going towards the cooler side. And the number that I used was a plus 45. We want to increase our saturation a little bit in here. And the number that I used on the saturation was 42. Now it's getting a bit too kind of bright and cheery in there, a bit cartoony looking. 
So you can pull that down with the lightness. It just backs it off a little bit. And the number that I used on the lightness was a negative 59 right there. It just kind of tones it down. Of course, the numbers that you use are based upon your own personal preference, but I think that looks pretty good. Let's take a look at this and see how that has worked. There's a before and there's after. We just added in some green without really changing the overall values of that area. So that takes care of the greens. Now the sky up here, that's basically blue. So let's take a look at our blue channel. There's a blue channel. Let's double check by doing the saturation. You can see there it's the sky is a little bit in the window. And the license plate, we can ignore the license plate. So the sky is controlled by the blue. And we can just up the saturation a bit in here. And I put mine up to 20. It just adds just in a little bit more blue. We can see this by hiding and showing that layer again. Of course, keep in mind that it's going to also be adjusting the grass in here, the trees. So just look at the sky part right now. Ignore everything else. And that brings back in just a little bit of the sky. And that's what I want, just a bit more color up there. And that's just increasing our saturation on the blue channel. Okay, that takes care of that part of it. The last little thing in here is it looks just a little bit too red to my eye down here around the wheels. Just a bit too reddish in here. Let's back off on the red a little bit. I'll bring this back up again. And the nice thing about using these layer adjustments in here is that you can double click on the layer and it brings the adjustment back up again so you can go back and readjust your settings if you want to. I want the reds this time. I just want to bring down the saturation on the reds just a little bit. Let's just pull this back to the left a little bit. Just kind of tone that down. Doesn't take much. Maybe about negative 14 or so. Just taking the edge off of the reds. And there we go. Now if I show and hide this, that's what our top layer up here was. That first copy we made. That's the original. So there's our original and there's our adjusted picture. Now the nice thing about this technique is it's really easy to come back in and control all the values and the colors very specifically by using these adjustment layers in here. Of course, the additional color is brought in with that one layer here, richening up those colors, and then everything else is controlled with these adjustment layers, including that black and white layer that brings in our contrast. Now, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. Don't forget to click on share and subscribe as well. And also take a look at my complete training for Photoshop Elements. There's a link for that right down there in the description. And check out my channel for a bunch more videos. All right, and I'll see you next time.